Ladies, it's your time to shine with all things fabulous with First for Women on Afternoon Express. For insurance with a host of fabulous benefits, call 0861 11 1844 or SMS FIRST to 49267. There is a woman in our <laughs> studio <laughs> and in our loft with probably one of the most sensational voices you've ever seen. Danilo's there too. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was hoping you were going to say it was me. Welcome to South Africa. My name is Danilo Acristo. That's right, Jeannie. Her name is Nono Vuiso Mpofu. She's an incredible opera singer. She's a soprano, has just been overseas, the youngest of 40 finalists in 21 countries overseas celebrating South African uh, singing. So first of all, it's an absolute honor to have you in our loft today. Thank you very much. Thank I was going to ask you to belt out like a mess, massive high C, <laughs> but I thought I'd let you warm up your voice first and chat to Jeannie <laughs> later on. We yeah. also have Yvette Olofs joining us in the kitchen today. Now, Yvette, I hear we're making something super warm for winter nights. Yes. We, what are we making? I'm making a tomato breedy, slow mm. cooked, as my grandmother used to make. Oh, amazing. I'm looking forward to it. Plus, we're going to be experimenting with caramel. You do not want to miss it. Afternoonexpress.co.za is our website. Don't forget, the shopping list as well as recipe is available for you over there. Otherwise, go and find us on Twitter, at Afternoon Chat. Uh, we're on Afternoon Express on Facebook and on Instagram. You're more than welcome to get in touch with us. We love to hear from you. 083-913-3728. This is your show, South Africa. Right now, let's kick it off, though. The ladies are on the couch. Thank you, Danilo. Now, after losing both his legs and his right arm due to a tragic accident in 1998, he not only made an exceptional recovery, but through sheer determination and a positive attitude, he learned how to play tennis and has subsequently become South Africa's number one ranked tennis player in the quad division. Joining us in the loft is recent winner of the British Open, Lucas Satoyle. Welcome to the loft, Lucas. Thank you. Everyone. Wow, what a great achievement. 2015 is truly a year. Congratulations on the British on winning the British Open. How did that feel? Uh, it was uh, great, uh, you know, to win the uh, British Open again because I won it in 2013. In 2013 yeah, yes. so this was the second time, and I was uh, one set down and fall off down. Then I came back. Uh, it was and the wind was very disturbing, but uh, I managed to to stick to my plans, to stick uh -huh. to my game. Yeah. That's beautiful. Now, you fell in love with tennis in 2007, and then a year later, you went on to compete internationally. How did you make so much progress in such a short space of time at such an international level? Uh, you know, uh, when I started to play uh, with tennis, you know, uh, like the coaches, they said, no, 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 you can't, uh, you can't play uh, with tennis with uh, one hand. How are you going to push? Because you also have to hold your record. How are you going to save? You know? yeah. Then I trained by myself alone by yourself yeah every and what, day who after introduced school? you to tennis how did it happen i was uh patrick slepe who introduced to me tennis in 2005 i was at high school at philadelphia secondary school in pretoria mm -hmm. that's when he introduced me to tennis and then i started to you know like to to play just for fun then yeah. like 2007 then that's when i took it serious you know uh, i started to practice alone uh practice the serve and then a year after and then they saw that i was uh improving wow. uh, and then they said okay we're trying this take you to a tournament uh, overseas. I went, my first tournament was in uh, Amsterdam. Okay. Yes, and then I lost in the first round, you know. Oh. <laughs> but then I didn't give up. I came back, I keep uh, practicing. Then they selected me to go play for um, national team, uh, World Team Cup, mm -hmm. which was in Italy. Then I won my matches, and then from there, and then they, they put me on the first team, then until today. That's so amazing. I'm so glad you didn't give up. Now, yeah. what is a typical day of tennis training for you look like? Uh, you know, I wake up at 6, uh, mm -hmm. past 6. I do 50 push-ups every oh day. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. <laughs> Just to <laughs> keep my shoulders. From that moment? Yeah, yeah. Wow. And then from then, then I go brush my teeth. And then uh, it depends uh, on a day. Maybe sometimes the coach can decide if I'm doing the endurance. The endurance is when I'm pushing around the court just to be fit. Okay. I uh, do uh, different exercises. Or sometimes we do the, um, a ball feeding which uh, it helps me to, to control the ball, to place the ball where I want to, uh, which, which, which uh, we normally do uh, every Thursday and Friday uh, because, <laughs> you know, when the week is going down, you also go down. Yes. Yeah, so, you know. Oh, my gosh. Tell us about your life before all these great successes, the tragic accident that changed your life forever. What was that about? Uh, before my accident, I was a soccer player at school. Okay. I was very tall. 
uh, I was going to be a Bafana Bafana defender. Yeah. Uh, and then God said, no, 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 no. He this boy no, he needs to, plan. yeah. He, so then he gave me his plan that accepted it. Then How did the accident happen? Uh, it was the 25th of July. It was in the morning. Uh, mm -hmm. the, the guy was driving the, the train. Uh, he called me to, to help him to change the roller line. Okay. Then I went in and changed the roller line, and then the train was moving slowly. Then I tried to get on, on the train. Then I fell underneath the train. Oh, my gosh. And that moment when you were lying in hospital and they were telling you that you have three amputations, what did that feel like? Uh, at first, you know, I tried to, to move out of the belt. Yeah. Uh, and then uh, I found out that I don't have uh, legs and then the arm. And then I was just lying there, didn't know what to do, didn't know wow. what to say, you know. My family, they, my mother, especially my mother, she's a strong woman, you know. Wow. Uh, I'm so happy to have a mother like that one, yeah. you know. And my little sister, Pindile, she was <laughs> very young when I was there. She was helping me, you know. <sighs> but there was nothing I could do except uh, just accepting. Accept it yeah. and move on. And then because immediately when that accident happened, my mother went to look for a school for me because mm -hmm. I was uh, at school by that time. Mm -hmm. And it was going to for a, an exams. So she ran around and she finally got me a school, which was also a Bombesiza special school for yeah. physical disabled uh, kids. Then I went there and then when I get there and then that's when my mind started to, you know, to open up because I to saw other kids. Yes. yes, I saw other kids who were living with a uh, disability. Yeah. They were like yeah. playing around, moving around. And then I was like, why do I have to feel sorrow for myself, myself. when the other kid is doing yeah. this? And then I started to say, I, you know what? Let me just live my life. Let me just enjoy whatever it comes. Let me just go with the flow. Wow, thank goodness for strong mothers, hey? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what about your road to recovery? Weren't there times when you wanted to give up? And what kept you going in those moments? You know, I never thought of uh, give up. Never? Never. Uh, I always like to, to try then to fail to try. I always like the challenges. Yes. Since after my accident, my mother took me to a boarding school. I was all alone, I was independent. Wow. Even I moved from Newcastle to Philadelphia, Pretoria. It's like five hours drive yeah. away from home. You were like, no I was, matter what. Yeah, yeah, I was, I was doing my washing. I'm sure everyone's going like, huh? <laughs> yeah, I was doing my washing yeah, yeah, by yeah. myself. I didn't have a girlfriend by that time. <laughs> <laughs> Do you have one now? <laughs> now I'm married. So, oh, yeah. congratulations. That's Thank awesome. you. So by that time, I, I never thought of uh, give up. Even when I went to Philadelphia, there were like senior students yeah. who were still playing basketball. I was a little boy. But then I went on a court with them. Now, not only are you South Africa's number one tennis court player, but you have released a CD with uh, uh, people from your community. Yes, yes. And you sing as well. I'm trying to say. <laughs> but you have a CD out now. Yeah. What's it called? Um, it's called uh, Lucas Tole. Mm -hmm. uh, the title is as in Dabin. Yes. I released it uh, last year with my cousins and my one younger brother. Yeah. That is so amazing. You are truly, truly inspiring. Thank you for sharing your story with us. But you're not going away. We're going to feed you <laughs> later on. <laughs> okay. Awesome. Lucas will be back in the loft a little bit later on. And just a reminder to get out and get your 50 Rand off South Africa's number one foundation just by purchasing Revlon Color Stay Foundation now at any leading retail and pharmacy stores nationwide. While stocks last, take a selfie with the product and you and your plus one, your bestie or your lover, could win a 24 our experience in Bonang's life. Hanging here on set, enjoying the city life, by dining at one of her favorite restaurants, staying at her favorite hotel, and turning love on, whether you're in love or looking for love. So just take a pic of you and your Revlon Color Stay Foundation, like these viewers have already done, and tweet us at Afternoon Chat, hashtag Foundation Fridays, hashtag Love Is On, or post it on our Facebook page, Afternoon Express. This amazing prize, valued at 25,000 Rand, includes an all expenses paid trip to Cape Town for two, dinner at an A-list restaurant, plus a 10,000 rand shopping spree. So get tweeting now. Don't forget the hashtags. Hashtag Foundation Fridays, hashtag love is on. After the break, Danilo makes a traditional tomato bready and we chat to opera singer Vuvum Ofu. Don't go away.
Welcome back, South Africa, to Afternoon Express. My name is Daniel Lockwist, and today in the kitchen, I'm actually very excited. We're going to be making the fastest slow roasted tomato breedy for you today. It is absolutely delicious. The smell in here is incredible. I wish you guys could come and join me on this journey. But Izet, uh, you're going to be showing us how to get this whole process started and done. It's the first time I've ever cooked with you, so just I need to. We need to build a relationship yes. here. Okay, yeah. you've got an opera singer. Can yes. you sing? No. No, you can just cook. I can cook. Okay, but she needs to practice because later on, we, you and I are going to do a bit of a sing so to okay. throw forward to the other side. Okay, so how do we make this very quick, slow roasted tomato breedy? Okay, so you start off with very good quality beef stew, mm -hmm. it cut into pieces, then you sear it off in the pot with okay. olive oil so it's nice and golden brown. Cool. So it's also sealed to keep your juices in so it's lovely Amazing. and succulent so you've used is that is that roasting beef what, what that's what? beef stew beef stew yep. okay and can you use any any type of beef or is that the recommended that only version yeah that is the recommended but okay. then in there is chuck brisket blade okay amazing yeah awesome and then what happens so now we saute the onions it's two red onions chopped mm -hmm. in the olive oil mm. And it's got all that meat in it too, yeah. which is amazing. You add about four carrots. Oh, nicely And chopped. your celery for flavor. Okay. And you saute this in the pot. I've got a spoon here for you, oh, so yeah. I'll do this for Thank you. you. Can you do that? Sure. This needs to settle down for quite a while, I'm sure. So yep. we're just going to show you the basic process, South Africa, so you can get a feel for how the whole thing's done. But it is a slow roast. Yeah. How long, how slow is slow? How long will this recipe take us to complete? Yeah, we'll basically slow roast that in the oven for two hours, two hours at okay. 160. And then after we've added the butternut, it's another hour. So in total, okay. it's about, about three, three hours. hours. So it's a nice oven. Sunday meal. You said that this is one of the meals that your grand uh, yeah, used to make. Yeah, it's lovely comfort food when uh -huh. it's winter. Nice to eat on sweet potato mash. It lovely. just brings oh. out all those old memories. It reminds me of the oxtail my father used to make. Yeah. So once that's sauteed, we add yeah. the beef back into the pot. Cool. Mmm. Obviously, those uh, those carrots and stuff would have reduced a lot more. We're just going to yeah. show you how it's done for now. It's so all that beef goes back in, and that's to soak all that flavor up from those vegetables into the meat. Yes, okay. absolutely. Amazing. Then what happens? Now we add fresh tomato. It's always very good to add fresh and thin tomato. Mm -hmm. The fresh tomato, I think the old people, they always used to do that. <laughs> Not only the thin tomato. We've become lazy. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. The garlic we cool. still need to add. Can you just give that a sure. nice stir? Absolutely. I'll put this here because this is quite hot. I'll stir that around for you. This is going to happen. Then all those flavors are going to soak into this meat slowly, slowly. You can add the tomato in the meantime. Obviously, we're not going to have enough time to so um, get those reduced, but naturally you let those sort of yeah. settle for a long so time afterwards. The fresh tomato, here's some tin, tin tomato. And you use the whole cherry tomato. Yeah, the whole okay. cherry Italian tomato. Can you use normal tomatoes. whole tomato? You can use the whole ones oh. as well. You can use chopped. This is the tomato mm. paste. Nice. And the tomato has got that rich, rich, rich yeah. flavor. Yeah. And Everybody the flavor does. develops of the tomato paste the longer you yes, let it cook settle. that. Oh. And now we do some lemon zest, fresh lemon zest. Cool. That goes lovely with yes. the tomato. Ooh. It's almost like that, uh, the, the real tomato, what you call it, the, the acidity of that tomato and that lemon zest all come together quite nicely there. Mm. Mix that up a bit. And then this is basically going to be sealed and put in the oven. Yeah. Before that, we yeah. need to add the red wine. Ooh. So it's about two cups. And one cup to drink, <laughs> yes. obviously. So for this, you must just always make sure your, all your meat is covered in the liquid. Right, so you can push that down there. That's yeah. a nice so technique like to learn. That. Cool. And don't forget, South Africa, if you want the full recipe and all the details on the portions, numbers, etc., don't forget, afternoonexpress.co.za, it is all available for you. It is so simple, and that website looks incredible. So all of these recipes that we do create here do go there immediately. Cool. Put now, what do you seal that? Yeah, put I the lid. Back on, back into the oven for about two hours. Amazing. I'm going to show you guys exactly what we've made because you've done one here and it smells incredible, so I have to show you. It's quite hot, so I'm going to put that there. This is at the end of time is what it should look like. I don't know if you guys can see in there. 
but that's basically what your your stew should look like at the end of the time and then nicely to serve this as you said is a bed of almost sweet potato mash yes sweet potato mash you can do other mash but i just found the sweet potato it's a lovely rich flavor with this you can make it with fresh ginger Amazing. then it tastes mm. even better with your lemon from the tomato bready awesome. and you serve it with freshly torn basil lovely is it it's been legendary cooking with you. Thank you very much for joining us on Thank Afternoon you. Express. We're now going to be joining Jeannie on the couch for a bit of... <laughs> Danilo, I love you, but your singing gives me anxiety. <laughs> now, today, First for Women Insurance is continuing the first SA Women series where we celebrate amazing South African women. We have with us up-and-coming opera star Nolovuyi Mpofu, a final year post-grad performance student at the UCT College of Music. Now, Vuvu was the youngest of 40 finalists from 21 countries who took part in, this, in the prestigious International Opera Relia Competition in London recently, judged by by a 14-strong international jury representing opera houses from all over the world and led by the renowned Placido Domingo. And she went to, on to will earn third place overall. On behalf of First for Women Insurance, please have a look at this sensational voice. <laughs> what a fantastic <laughs> clip, but what a moving voice. Thank you. Congratulations, Vuvu, and welcome to welcome to our loft. Thank now, you. what a fantastic achievement. So you've recently gotten back from London where you yes. came third mm -hmm. in this fantastic Operalia. Mm -hmm. Now you're only 24 years old. This is quite an achievement. Yeah, it is. It is. I mean, how difficult is it to be recognized internationally in this field? Um, uh, there are a lot of uh, singers, good ones, and uh, it takes uh, dedication, um, you, the, the personality, what you bring on stage. Um, it's, 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 it's tough out there, but uh, you, you, what, what, what else you can do? You have to just go there and just prove to people that you can do it, um, you're there. Yeah. How old were you when you first started working on your pipe, so to speak? <laughs> sure, I was five. I started singing at five, uh, stay, uh, sang it in church, and then I went on to singing uh, in choirs, like um, uh, uh, high school as well. Yeah. So, and then that's where I, 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 I discovered opera. Amazing. Yeah. And why, what was it about opera that spoke to you? I mean, I think a lot of young girls, when you, dis when you realize that you can sing and you have that talent, like in my mind, I was like, oh, I'm going to be the next Christina Aguilera. <laughs> <laughs> I never quite thought that, okay, I could be the next Luciana Pavarotti. But I mean, so what was that about opera that, that spoke to you? Uh, for me, uh, it was, I was in a competition, in a choral competition, and they had the opera category. And then there was this girl singing, and then I was like, okay, she's singing in a different language, and the, she was wearing a costume, and I, w I was like, okay, I fell in love immediately. Uh, I was like, okay, that is what I want to do. And then the next year, I sang. I Amazing. started singing opera. Yeah. And now you obviously sing in Italian. Mm -hmm. How much of the language do you understand? Um, um, at UCT, we, 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 uh, they teach us the basics uh, of Italian, German, French. So um, you have to learn those languages in order uh, for you to understand what you're singing about. Yeah. Fantastic. Now, back to your opera earlier. I mean, you were chosen by an international panel mm -hmm. led by Placido Domingo, who yes. obviously decided, I mean, this young lady is incredible what mm. was that like to be in such good company uh it was amazing like the, the first time I, I met him uh he came to me and he was like uh i thought i was going to say see you in madrid because we were doing a, um a, an opera in madrid uh so i was like oh, oh okay i'm sorry you missed me but i was i was getting ready for operalia of <laughs> course and uh i just stopped myself from being starstruck I was I was I was very excited. He's such an, an amazing person. He's very humble, 
and uh, I was just I was just blessed to be in the competition as it is. Mm. What does this mean for your career? Uh, for me, uh, going into that competition, um, it was a, a way of um, seeing where I can go, how how far I can get. Uh, it's it's a matter of pushing myself. So um, the third prize that I won was actually something that says, okay, you did it. So you can actually do more, like um, uh, um, put yourself in, 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 a, in, in other heights in the, in internationally. Exactly. So, yeah. Okay, so what are you going to do now? I'm putting pressure <laughs> on you now. <laughs> well, for now, I'm, I'm, I'm doing productions uh, at school. And next year, I'm looking um, at uh, going to a studio overseas. Uh, so basically, that's that for now. Yeah. Okay. And what does the studio mean? I mean, what kind of doors does this open for you? Are you going to be performing on our upper stages all over the world? Yes. It, 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 it basically means that uh, I'll have um, training, more training, uh, that will be able, that will enable me to 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 be uh, like on those stages, the big stages, like the one I was in in London. Outstanding. What yeah. advice would you give to young girls who are watching this now, thinking? Wow, I want to be on those stages. I would say um, have passion for what you do. Um, don't let anyone else tell you that you can't, you cannot do, any, you cannot make it or anything. Because the, in this in this industry, um, it's it's tough, and then you will have lots of doors like um, closed uh, uh, on your face. But you have to be, you have to be, and uh, you have to have endurance. You see, so that's what I would have. What kind so of thing do you think gives you your endurance? Because, I mean, it's quite a difficult thing. You've got to hone, you've got to look after your voice as mm -hmm. if it's your instrument. Yeah, that's So very how true. do you, I mean, do you have to watch your diet? Do you have to watch what you drink? What goes into keeping you being the best in the world? Yes, um, you have to watch what you eat, what you drink. Um, and also you have to practice, give you, yourself um, uh, time to practice because, like, uh, any other instrument like the violins, they, they, they have time every day, they go, they go and then they rehearse. That's what you have to do with your voice. You have to practice every day um, um, to, to improve your technique. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. so that's, that's it. Oh, it's tough work to be the best in the world, but <laughs> congratulations Thank to you. you. What much. a fantastic, you. fantastic prize to win. Thank you. And may I wish you the best in your Thank career you and going much. forward. That's Thank wonderful. You. Now, we absolutely suit you, and so does First for Women. Now, in, if you enjoy watching performers like Vuvu, First for Women's entertainment assist benefit will be of great value to you. Now, not only will you have access to the latest entertainment event information, but you will also receive assistance with hotel accommodation bookings, restaurant, and general travel arrangements. For more information on the benefits you receive when you take out a car or home policy from First for Women, visit uh, firstforwoman.co.za or for an insurance quote for, uh, from First for Women, call 0861 11 18 44 or SMS FIRST to 49267 and they'll call you back. After the break, we discuss life after tragedy and it's our weekly Go Green sustainability series. We'll be right back. Welcome back to Afternoon Express on SABC3. Now, surviving a tragedy can lead to significant long-term physical and psychological damage. We've spoken to Lucas about his inspiring journey to recovery, and joining the conversation are two experts in rehabilitation from Tigerberg Hospital, occupational therapist Alvin Williams and clinical psychologist Dr. Debbie Alexander. Welcome to The Loft. Welcome. Welcome. I think let's start off by, by defining tra tragedy. I mean, what does it mean if you've gone through a tragedy? So um, if one thinks about a tragedy, it's, an, it's mm. an event that causes significant distress for somebody or there's um, devastation or there's suffering. So um, when we talk about event, it could be an accident, uh, just like Lucas has had, or perhaps it's a natural disaster or it's a crime. And sometimes it could be a loss of uh, one's job, a loss of one's home, a loss in the family. Mm -hmm. um, so any of those uh, yeah. events uh, could be likened to a tragedy. What are some of the ways that people react to or respond to tragedy in their lives? So some people see it as terribly devastating. Mm -hmm. um, they experience it as negative and that there's no hope for the future. They can't see a way out for the future. 
others like Lucas, it was very difficult for him at the start, but he actually said he accepted it. He accepted wow. it and he moved on. Others again think, well, this is a, a second chance for me in life. Mm -hmm. So once they've got over the shock and uh, all the difficulties, they see it as a new beginning. Yeah, It must be so tough because how do you know how you're going to cope in a yeah. situation like this? I mean, that's, I suppose, part of the devastation is that not knowing. But what kind of coping mechanisms are there, do you think, Elvin? Um, I think one of the most important things is knowing that there's a support system available. I think the reality is for many of South Africans, we live in um, contexts where we are faced with day-to-day -day trauma, violence, drug and alcohol abuse. So one of the key things, I think, to the recovery process is realizing that you have an intact support system. Um, and that there are resources available that you can draw on um, yeah. to help with the recovery yeah. process. What is the significant difference between somebody who overcomes a, a tragedy and goes on to triumph and somebody who stays in it or regresses? Mm -hmm. So I'll, re I'll respond to that from a psychological perspective. Yeah, because um, I think the difficulty is that with a tragedy, you don't have to experience suffering. So the tragedy, let's say, for example, I was shot in the leg. Yes. That is a physical experience, and I, my attention's focused there, and we deal with that. But where it becomes suffering is when I attach meaning to it, when I then hook Become onto, a victim, I suppose. Yes. Yeah. So then I would hold on to the past, for example. You know, what did I do wrong? Oh, it's Why my me? fault. Yeah. Uh, then there's the shame, and there's the anger attached to that, and I that can't let go What could I have done it. differently? Yes. Right. Yes. Yeah. So, or I'm thinking about, oh, no, now I don't have a future, um, so there's no hope for me. So it's those things, holding on to the past or fear of the future that keeps you in a position of suffering rather than accepting, and this is where I am now. But from a psychological point of view, that makes absolutely sense to me, to you. Mm. How do you explain that to somebody who's been a victim and has yet to still go through that process yeah. to say, actually, I'm okay with this, that this has happened to me? Yeah. I think that it's important to realize that the process of recovery and the process of rehabilitation is it's very different from individual to individual mm -hmm. and you, you have to respect the context of the individual as well so their life experiences, their past exposure to trauma that they've um, also experienced in their life also as I said before looking at their support systems that they have the journey of recovery could um, take for some, you know, weeks, some mm. months. Some could never actually re recover from wow. and integrate that into their lives, wow. unfortunately. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you go for it. <laughs> but then how can we, as, as f f friends or, or, or people in that environment, how can we be of support to people that have gone mm. through a trauma in that case? Because what happens if somebody doesn't ever get through it? I mean, yeah. how can I be somebody who, who can support that and, and just be there? Well, I think the, the, the family initially play a very important role um, in, in the recovery phase, instilling hope, um, letting the individual know that they are there, if, even if it's just, you know, sitting at the hospital side, um, bringing familiar things from, from the environment to the hospital, mm -hmm. you know, looking at um, alternative ways of expressing the, the negative emotions. Right. For example, Lucas um, explored different leisure pursuits. You know, he explored wheelchair basketball, then he explored you know, looking at um, tennis in, in a wheelchair, mm. um, looking at the possibilities um, for reintegrating to school and reintegrating to work, Yay. which is really important. Yeah, and you did um, say you had a very supportive mother. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Awesome. Difference. Thank you so much. So Thank next you. up, we have Danilo with this week's installment of our Go Green Sustainability Series. Remember to listen carefully and answer our Go Green SMS competition and stand a chance to win a thousand Rand Woolies gift card. Take a look at this. The Afternoon Express team is going green. Join us every Tuesday at 4 p.m. until September as we bring you the most innovative trends in sustainable fashion, food, decor and design, as well as handy tips to help you reduce your carbon footprint. Answer our Go Green question every Tuesday and stand a chance to win a thousand Rand Woolies gift card every week. 
Plus, simply by entering, you also go into the big draw for the ultimate grand prize worth over half a million rand. Including a dream sustainable kitchen makeover from Cordev, fitted with Bosch appliances with 300,000 rand. Also, up to 250,000 rand worth of home upgrades so you can live off the grid. Plus, food and homeware from Woolworths valued at 75,000 rand and 25,000 rand towards a school of your choice with my school. So, go big, go green with Afternoon Express every Tuesday at 4 p.m. to win these amazing prizes. So we give away prizes for recycling. How awesome is that? But before we get started with today's chat, we're proud to announce that the winner of last week's 1,000 Rand Woolies gift card is, drum roll, Michaela Erasmus from Pretoria. So a big congratulations to you. For today's installment, however, we chat about recycling. So we've been given and we've been taught at school and at home to recycle, but what we really, do we really know what goes on behind the scenes? Uh, we're joined today by Cherie Schultz. Uh, she's the Chief Executive Officer or CEO of Petco. It's a PET, a company that's involved with trying to, um, you know, create more ways for people to understand recycling, create business, and really, really change the way that we deal with the environment. So it's very good to have you, Sheree, with us in the loft today. Sheree, let's first start off with what PETCO is. It's an acronym PETCO. The CEO stands for company, but what does PET stand for? PET stands for polyethylene terephthalate, which is a really awful word, but it's <laughs> commonly called polyester. Okay. And in fact, it's it's the way that polyester is used for rigid packaging that's mm. called PET as opposed to the textile industry. Yeah. So what exactly has Petco done? Because my understanding was that Petco is not an organization that came in from the outside and said, we're not doing the right things with recycling. What happened was the people who are using PET started to create this organization because they wanted to regulate the way that the process works. So give us a bit of a history about Petco, how it got started and what it exactly does. Ten years ago, the key players in the industry got together and decided that they needed to take responsibility for their products, which mm. were PET bottles, mm -hmm. at the end of their life cycle. And they realized that that would need funding and structure. Mm. So they formed the organization and they pay a voluntary recycling levy on every ton of material that they buy so that we can ensure that it gets collected and recycled in South Africa. Amazing. What's the difference between plastic that we know of and PET? And how do we know the difference? PET is identified with the number one code. Mm -hmm. It's an injection blow molded product. So if you look at the bottom of a bottle, mm. you'll see a triangle and you'll actually see the number one. We're very lucky to be the number one plastic. <laughs> <laughs> and so it is a very commonly used plastic, I think, from around the world. And what I love what Petco is doing is you're also creating small business. Tell us more about that, because that's something that I think is very, very inspiring. A whole bunch of really awesome stories of people who've created incomes from what Petco do. I think in South Africa, we have a unique opportunity. It's, it's We have a different opportunity to Europe where labor costs are high. Here we have a large amount of unemployed people with low skills and the green economy has mm. a real opportunity to create jobs. So we have about 44,000 people in South Africa today who earn a living from collecting PET. Wow, so the small businesses are created and new businesses created, which I love the most. What kind of numbers are we talking about? How much PET is recycled on a yearly basis in South Africa? This year we're aiming to recycle 70,000 tons. Last year we did 64,000. In a year? In a year. Wow. But to put that in perspective for you, that's four and a half million bottles every single day. Sure. That is a big number. What is the process of going through this recycling? Because I know Petco doesn't do the recycling themselves, but they create the connections uh, necessary in order to make this process efficient and to make sure that we are recycling the maximum number of PET that we can. How is an item, how does it get from me or somebody leaving it in a bin to getting it into a brand new product? It all starts with us deciding that we are going to meet a target. And this year we're aiming for 50% of all post-consumer use bottles. Wow. And by 2022, 70%. So when we know how many we have to collect, mm. we enter into contracts with recyclers and we fund them. So every single kilogram of PT that's collected in the country receives financial support from sure. us. And then those recyclers have 
a product that they make, either mm. for the textile industry or back to go into packaging. Sure. We've got some of these here. So take mm. us through uh, what are some of these products. We've seen them all around our houses. <coughs> We've seen them at the malls, at the shops. But did we ever know that this was as a product of what PET is about? I think that's key, that mm. people go to so much effort to recycle and they don't understand what happens to all mm. their good efforts. And this is a great opportunity. These are all made from fiber. And at the bottom, we have actually a very sophisticated geotextile, which is an industrial textile. And mm -hmm. it's used for the linings of the Gautrain tunnel, for example, wow. the lining of dams, roads. It's a very sophisticated material. Mm. This is a new product that was actually developed here in Cape Town for mm -hmm. the retail sector. And it's a reusable bag. Sure. The one on the, on the side is actually carpeting, which is used in the automotive mm -hmm. industry for fuse box liners, mm -hmm. carpeting. So all the applications where you would use virgin polyester, yes. we can use recycled. And then perhaps the nicest one we have here today, this is a legacy project mm. that we did to celebrate our 10 year anniversary. Mm -hmm. And this duvet is filled with polyester fiber. I have some over here. This okay, is so actually what it looks like. It's the filling. Can I feel it? Absolutely. And then the fabric on the outside is also made from that fiber, but that fiber is taken and it's spun into a yarn, mm. and then the yarn is knitted into a fabric. It's nice so and soft. This is very, very nice and warm. Well, you probably sleep on a pillow at home that's filled with that. I wouldn't be surprised. So there is something that we as South Africans can do, and I think that's to make sure that we are focusing on our recycling. It's to make sure that we are putting it in the right place, that if you do have plastics, they don't go to landfills. We want to make sure that we do not have that process even part of our understanding. Make sure that you are collecting all your plastics, putting them together, and finding a spot that is a dedicated collection point mm -hmm. because you are contributing to small business as well, which I love. So Sherry, thank you so much for joining us on Afternoon Express. Thank you. It's such an honor. So if you guys want more information, on how you can recycle PET, then all you have to do is visit our website, afternoonexpress.co.za, and remember to enter our Go Green SMS competition. Now, this week's question is, PET is commonly used for the production of, is it A, plastic bottles, B, pasta, C, Blasters. SMS the keyword go green, your name and your answer, A, B or C, to 33728. It's as simple as that. We'll be right back. Willis and I are collaborating to raise 100 million rand through the My School program. Are you with us? Welcome back. We're on the couch with our two experts and we're joined again by Lucas Sotole. Now remember, if you have any questions for our experts, then call us now on 083 913 3728. Tweet us at Afternoon Chat using the hashtag Afternoon Express or comment on our Facebook page. Welcome back, guys. And Lucas, welcome back. I'm so, so privileged actually to meet you. And uh, I was actually having a look at your statue just now, at your at your cup trophy, trophy <laughs> that you won at the British Open in the, in the quad division. Congratulations. That is an incredible achievement. Thank you. Yeah, we also have a caller right now on the line. Estelle has a question for you, Lucas. Hello, Estelle. Welcome to Afternoon Express. Hi. Um, I don't have a question for, for Lucas. I just want to tell Lucas that I think he is a very, very big inspiration for the rest of the people in South Africa who have awful limbs and that they can't do what he's done yes. with only one. Yes. So I just want to tell him, keep up the good work. God bless you. Oh, Thank you. Exactly. What a beautiful message. That's lovely. Thank you, Estelle. Thank you. Awesome. Wow, that is so true. One other question I wanted us to I wanted to ask you is how can what are some of the interventions that are available for people integrating after a tragedy into work, into school, mm -hmm. into just life in general? So one of the, the key things that um, we can assist with as an as occupational therapists is providing assistive devices and technologies that will enable you know people to reintegrate into roles that they find meaningful again. So for example, in Lucas's case, providing a wheelchair proper seating device, looking at prosthetic devices that will enable functionality at school, at work. Um, if you're looking at higher education and training, we have a number of offices um, at all campuses in the Western Cape. 
um, and I'm sure in other provinces as well at the universities where we have offices for persons with disability that provide um, not only academic support but also support in terms of academic counselling and advice. If you're looking specifically around work, occupational therapists are able to provide a comprehensive work assessment to determine what um, abilities individuals have um, and, and which area of, of work they are able to integrate yeah. Um, yeah. back into. So there is some kind of quality of life absolutely. post, uh, yeah. you know, disability yeah, or, absolutely. or, or I trauma. Mean, yeah. Lucas's living testimony of that. Yeah. Exactly. Let's go to Facebook. We've got a piece, uh, a Facebook comment from Peter Johnson. It says, I sought medical advice and was put in touch with a psychologist who actually helped me to gain perspective on life and how I could cope with life after a car accident I was involved in during my national service years. Mm. And uh, there is nothing wrong in going to a psychologist mm. for help and assisting one to gain control of your life. I think that's so important. Yeah. Actually, for, for a lot of people, sometimes they see it as a weakness if they have to go mm. for help. Mm. But, but it actually isn't. It's, yeah. it's strength yeah. of, of character to say, listen, I need help and I need to get control yeah. again. I think uh, if one does that, that's half the battle won. Well, it's the, right. the ones that don't seek help that really do struggle. And uh, I think particularly if one's had a head injury, it really is difficult sure. because sometimes with the head injury, their personality changes and one doesn't realize that oneself yeah. and uh, behavior might change. Yes. The person may be aggressive. They struggle to um, manage in, at home. The family doesn't know what to do with them. They struggle to integrate at school or work. Yeah. So it's very, very um, important. important that they seek help because... Yes, um, mm -hmm sometimes they, they're very apathetic. So they will be lying around on the couch at home and then the family will say, the person is lazy, but it's because of the head injury that they have such apathy. Oh, wow. um, uh, and the mood changes, because it's because of the head injury and the, the family actually don't understand that. So if they seek help, they will on, not only be able to help the person that's um, experiencing but the problem, the but also to support the person. Yes, and they're not the only person who needs the help. Maybe, yeah. you know, a mother or, or, or all the people yeah. very close to the person who's yeah. experienced the tragedy yeah. also might need to seek some help in dealing with it. So we work with the individual, with the family, mm. and then sometimes it's important for us to go to the schools exactly. uh, and to the workplace so mm. that we can educate mm. people around what the difficulties yeah, are. We're going to get back, we're going to chat to us a little bit later, but first let's check in with Danilo, he's in the kitchen, and he's about to make us a delicious sweet treat. Indeed, a couple of years ago, the big fad was salted caramel and it continued to grow in the culinary industry and it's grown all the way to our loft right here today. So joining us in the kitchen, Lisa Clark is going to be showing us how to make the most perfect salted caramel sauce. So Lisa, first of all, welcome to our loft. It's absolutely Thank awesome you. to have you here. I like sweet things and adding a bit of salt means you're adding a bit of flavor and twist to it, which I dig so much. So how do we go about making salted caramel? It's a very simple recipe. It literally contains four ingredients, which is butter, salt, and cream, mm. and sugar, okay. obviously. So firstly, what we do is we melt the sugar. We'll melt the butter first. Melt the butter, sorry. <laughs> melt the butter, <laughs> butter. Add the sugar. I, I got Add what you sugar. were saying. Can you hold that for me sure. there? So are you today are using the Salati Demerara? Right. It's basically really cool unrefined brown sugar. It's been added to a little bit of treacle syrup, and it adds a really awesome caramel flavor to any of your culinary dishes that you're making, whether it be a bake or anything that you're using in the kitchen. So I, I think that this is the I'm perfect combination. You. How much should I put? All of it. All of it. All grain, yep. Oh yeah, the more sugar the so better. So once you've added your sugar, yes. you allow that to melt down. Cool. You've melted one for us already, I, I see. So we can move that to one side, and once cool. that is melted, it will look Something like, like that. And then Ooh. what we do is we add our cream. Cool, can which I bring it to there, you? Please. Which one's the cream? That one there in the middle? This thing, yeah. oh, this is cream. Thanks. Because it's the only one that's okay. not brown. <laughs> and then just stirring all the time, you slowly incorporate it into your sugar syrup. Okay. Like that. So it mixes in nicely. What is the purpose of adding in the cream? It just it softens it, just, it a bit. It enriches it, it gives it flavor, okay. and also it gives it a good mouthfeel. Nice. And once that's all come together, Cream. you can add your salt. Salt. You can put a teaspoon in there for me if you don't mind. Heaped teaspoon, normal size teaspoon. Let's do a flat teaspoon. Like a flat teaspoon, like this. We can taste it afterwards. Is that okay? That's perfect. perfect. Off you go. Cool. Add some salt. There we go. Mm. And allow that to 
Now, what can we dissolve? use salted caramel for, by the way? I'm actually quite intrigued. This I know sauce it's is actually quite versatile. We can use it for all, dis all different types of things. Okay. Um, you Let's can turn use it. For you. Thank you. You can use it on savory. You can use it on sweet. Will you, you show can... me? Sure, absolutely. I, just, yeah, I, feel all like right. I would like well, to see. Well, it's very simple. I mean, what we do with the pork chops is we would just brush it over once they've been cooked and glazed. Okay. And what you could also do is put it back into the pan mm. and continue to glaze it. Oof. So it slightly caramelizes. And then it'll go that like really golden, crispy flavor on the outside as Absolutely, the sugar caramelizes. Absolutely, as it caramelizes. Mm. And then for chocolate brownies, we could literally take the sauce and just pour it all pour over. It over. Oh, that looks there so good. Go. I know everybody in this loft is drooling at this. And I'm sure South Africa is too. Lisa, that looks incredible. Thank you. Salted caramel, the new fad. I really dig it so much. Well, South Africa, there you go. It's pretty easy to make. Salted caramel right here on Afternoon Express. It's a really awesome sauce. Lisa, thank you so much. Thank you. See you after the break. Blended with treacle syrup, Salati Demerara makes delicious honeycomb, cookies, crumbles, brine marinades, and sweet potatoes. Salati, always good, always sweet. Welcome back. Now, are you interested in beautiful home interiors and trend-setting design? Well, Winner Home is building up to its second season. South Africa's most popular reality design and decor show is back. It's going to be bigger and bolder than last year, with more grueling challenges, and will raise the bar on South African interior design. Winner Home is looking for the best and brightest up-and-coming designers in South Africa to decorate this year's grand prize home. If you're an aspiring interior designer then come to Decorex and 100% design at Gallagher Estate between the 6th and the 10th of August to enter and meet the team. The first 100 entrants per day who arrive at the completed entry form will be given free entrance. So go to privateproperty.co.za forward slash winner home to get the entry form and remember bring it filled out to get your free ticket to the expo. Or if you're not able to make it to Gallagher Estate, then you simply enter online. But whatever you do, do it soon because entries close on the 10th of August. How yeah. exciting. Yeah. You can win a home. Yes. <laughs> exciting. I'm gonna dish up it's to you guys really don't mind. Food, please. Yes. Stuff looks amazing. So the brownies look amazing. Brownies. I don't know if anybody- oh, amazing. I'm gonna pass them Who wants dessert, dessert first? You were <laughs> very eager for dessert first. Yeah. I know. <laughs> Oh, wow. Oh, delicious. Are you going to try one? You know, this is That's against so uh, my uh, do eating plan. Yeah. Do you have my to coach, wash your yeah. diet? Yeah. If my coach was here, then ah. I would be in trouble. But because he's not watching, eat? so it's fine. Oh. Yeah, he's not. <laughs> How do you know he's not watching? I know. He's training someone at Yeah, he's home. training KG okay. and events. So oh. <laughs> Well, thank you so much. You've been absolutely sensational guests. Hope you enjoyed your day in the loft with us. Yeah. Thank you so much. Best of luck with your career. Best thank of you. luck with all of you. You know, continuing sure. to inspire again. people all yeah. over the country. Yeah. Thank you so much. Thank you for joining us. And uh, we'll be back again tomorrow. Same time, same place. Good night and happy, happy eating. eating. Oh, I'm definitely going. Coming up tomorrow on Afternoon Express, one of South Africa's hottest entertainment couples, Emo and Michelle Adams, join us in the loft to chat about family and married life. And with the high rate of pet drowning in South Africa, we highlight the importance of teaching your dog how to swim. Uh, never feel good production. Join us next time for more fabulous fun inspired by First for Women on Afternoon Express. For an insurance quote, call 0861 11 or SMS FIRST to 49267.